Good morning, good morning, good morning. I got a new toy. Hmm. What do I want to use my new toy? What is my new toy? My new toy is this thing. It seems so simple, right? What a simple little thing. I love this. This is this is this is what card readers invent. So I got this from a woman at the fair yesterday, right? Um she traded it to me for a mini reading. Because I was just in love with these things. I was like, dude, they're so cool. You can make some. She had so many up there. She's an artist. Um, she's an oracle reader. And she created her own oracle deck. What do we have going on here? Um, really now? What else have we got in here? Oh, I got a bunch of cards facing the wrong way. Oh, these were from the kids last night. We had a... Rob ran into um, this like 19-year-old kid that he worked with at his last job, and he was talking about how we did tarot readings, and the girlfriend was like, Oh, would you mind doing one? Da, 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 da. So we ended up hanging out with some 19 year olds last night because that's just what we do. Oh, God, fix that. Good Lord, shows you how much I pay attention to it. People are like, You do it on purpose. No, no, I don't. They're just a pain in the ass. But look what it does. It does this. Oh, light. How cool is that? I am just in love with it. The fair went awesome yesterday. I couldn't have asked for better. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I haven't done much of nothing yet. I've just been babbling about my new little toy here. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I'll do um, cards of the day. Oh, no, I got to put it on the other side because I cannot see your comments. If I put it on this side. Okay. Oh, somebody's awake. Let's see. I want to play with it, but I got to figure out what I'm going to do with it, right? I thought maybe I could do like a card of the day on the other channel or something like that. And you just throw it up there. Ten of cups. I'm in such a good mood. Yesterday was awesome, y'all. It was awesome. We had so much fun. Like I said, I did this. I did another reading for... I wasn't trying to step on nobody's toes because... uh. We ended up being in, like, I called it Reader Alley. I thought it was pretty funny. See, I'm like sitting all the way in the corner like that. Uh, it was, the woman next to me was an Oracle reader who made her own deck, and that's what she was selling. She had hard cards painted, uh, like little wood cards painted, and then she had the deck that she was selling, which I will be getting, because it will be up at the Zen Den for me to get later, and I had to keep telling my myself that over and over again yesterday that I can get it later, I can get it later because I do this thing in December where I don't buy myself any presents because it's Christmas. Um, no, it was so beautiful out yesterday. It's such a good time. There's only one person who was really a jerk. This dude, um, people were all interested in all the little fossilized fragments we had. And this guy comes up and he starts, they started bitching about the stones. They're like, oh, that's just green stone. That's just this stone. Da, 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 da. And um, I wasn't there. I had gone to do a reading for another vendor. She had come by and asked if I would do a reading for her. And uh, I was like, sure, you know. And she, she was like, well, I'm supposed to be at a booth. I was like, well, I can leave him here and we can go to your booth if, you know, that way you're over there. And she goes, that would be awesome. And then she didn't have a table. She had just art canvases pit up and just a chair. So we ended up sitting on the rug on the floor in front of her art while her husband sat in the middle of all the art. And I did the reading right there on the edge of the street. And we get halfway through the reading and I was like, what's your sign? She goes, an Aries. I was like, I'm an Aries too. I should have known. So much fun though. Yeah, no, they came up and they did all that. And then uh, when I got back, Rob was telling me about it, and the dude had, like, stomped off off to the side, and 
He said, I'm going to call my friend. He's an expert. And he went over there to go call his friend. He was standing at the thing, and Rob was telling me what he had done. He was like, a bunch of people were interested in all the little, you know, fragmented pieces, little fragmented fossil pieces that we had. And now we looked them up. Yeah, what we had was not some super rare whatever. I looked up the average price per pound that you could buy this stuff online. People do buy it all the time. You know, they buy it per pound. So I had, we had it set up where you could pick your own pieces and fill a bag for a couple of bucks. And like you would seashells or anything else. And this dude was just such a dick. And then um, he ended up going on the phone with his friend and then he left. And when I came back, I was explaining to uh, the woman next to me. She's like, yeah, he said this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, yeah, I was like, well, that's how the petrification process goes. I said, it's an organic life form that slowly turns into the mineral, into stone of the mineral states of what's in its area. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yes, they're indigenous soft rock. That is what petrified things become, living things turning into stone. I was like, Dude. I'm like, but how miserable of a person do you have to be to go to a little fair like that and hassle the vendors because as we were all packing up, somebody else came and they were talking to us. They're like, yeah, apparently he went in the store. He gave Susan shit about her petrified dinosaur, her uh, fossilized dinosaur poop that was inside the store. He was giving her shit about that. I was like, dude, who does that? Who does that? Well, you just came. You really, you're like a walking troll. You're like a walking internet troll. But besides that one jerk, man, everything else was fine. And I felt better when I found out, like, other vendors came up. They're like, yeah, that guy was a dick. He said this about my stuff. It's like, he actually went through the fair and anything that was getting any type of attention, he went and trolled. I'm like, good Lord, man. So we had that vendor, the woman next to us had the oral cards, the woman on the other side, she had some bracelets and stuff, but she was mainly focused on doing readings. And we had a new palm reader up there. But uh, we had this one lady, she was doing this stuff called fairy hair, which I'd never seen or heard of before. And apparently she can tinselize your hair. She like does this thing where she like actually adheres it to, to a piece of your hair at the root. And it's like this really shiny, long piece of tinsel, a uh, rainbowy tinsel, and it'll um, it can stay in for months. It'll stay in until your actual hair falls out. You could blow dry it, wash it, curl it with a curling iron, anything with it. it acts like actual hair. I was like, that's cool. And of course, Alyssa was like, I want some, and I'm like, I went and looked at it. I was like, three dollars for one piece of tinsel. I was like, there it all. Come on now. <laughs> I made her wait till three and I told her I'd give her $10 at three o'clock if she was good. Right. And she was out there. She was doing her thing. She was, at, she had a great time. She was telling everybody the prices of stuff. She was my little sales rep yesterday. And, um, at one point she was, she kept asking for money and she was like, well, can I at least go look and see what I want to buy when I get my $10? And I was like, all right, fine. Go ahead. You know, everybody here knows you, Susan and them know you at the front of the store. Go ahead. And, uh, yeah, so I let her go, and she walked around the corner, and she went down to the street part, so I kept getting up, just going to the corner and watching her, and then coming back, and it was like, every time I went to the corner and looked down, she was just at the next booth, chatting them up, just at the next booth, chatting them up, and she talked to every single vendor, and I let her go with no money, and that child came back with a piece of cheesecake, two sets of earrings, and a couple of Christmas cards, I'm like, <laughs> I end up going out and giving everybody little uh, baggies of that green man's beard prosperity sachets that I made at the end of the day just to thank them. I'm like, thank you guys for just letting my daughter talk you to death today. And they're like, oh, no, it was great. So sweet. Blah, 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 blah. Like, we could tell that she really wanted to talk. 
All right, so let's do your cards here. Definitely been a big, big shift. Big, big shift going on. All right, so I got the Nine of Pentacles, and then this card, it's like coming into that abundant energy after going through a lot of trials. So this is like, which trials? Like, well, I came through that. It's assigning positive meanings to the past, but still moving forward. You're still moving forward from it, right? Like you recognize that whatever you have gone through was the rite of passage. You have the four of pentacles here. I'm going to be working on my skills and building foundations again. I got the seven of pentacles here. Now in this deck, it's like, yeah, you left me to the wolves. And now I've worked on my skills and I'm building myself back up, right? I didn't get eaten by them. <laughs> I took control. What is that? You threw me to the wolves. That's okay. They come when I call. That's the energy I get off this card, right? Especially with the building of the skills. So that is awesome because that is on the 3D level. What This is not something up in your head. This is not what you're working through now. It's just everybody has finally hit that point where they've really worked through all the way down to the 3D and actually put it into physical motion. The getting over process and moving on from traumatic experiences. We've all gone through a lot this year. That's one thing I learned yesterday, too, talking to everybody. Everybody's gone through a lot this year. And there was definitely a huge, huge shift over the last few days. So on the 4D level, I got here the four swords reversed. Uh, Prince of Swords reversed. Oh, what did I say for the Prince of Swords reversed, and it's like you're not really sure where your thoughts keep trying to take you, right? It's like you're trying to follow your intuition, but at the same time, you're not really sure where your thoughts keep taking you to. Seems to be a weird place. You're not sure that's where you want to go. King of Pentacles. You want control over that for sure, because you want to be able to control all the way down to the, maintain that control all the way down to the 3D levels. So it's like, that's where you're wanting the control over. It's like, I'm trying to gain some little bit more control over my thoughts. I'm letting go of illusions, right? This is the botch. This is the seven of cups. I'm letting go of the illusions that I had. I'm accepting why I had these illusions and putting them into a more healthy perspective, right? I do have the Ace of Cups reversed here at the end. And I think that's just because you're going through the final layers of that shadow work, right? So you did all that on the physical level. So now you're breaking out of that old um, toxic comfort zone that you were in of those cycles. You've broken through them. You're kind of on your own now. Now your mind is drifting into some weird places and you want control over that because I feel a lot of us, I know definitely I've gone through it, your mind kind of pulled you in some really radical areas and you were just like, you have to accept that some of that stuff just a little too much, a little too crazy, a little too much for your mind to handle. And um, yeah, you want to put things back into a healthy perspective. I think especially a lot with, um, and I talked about that with the Oracle Reader yesterday too. We were talking a little bit about like the twin flame dynamics and uh and she's like, yeah, I've heard a little bit about it. And I looked into it. She goes, but I saw this one post where someone was talking about if your twin, if your twin flame calls you a stalker, then um, it's because your energy's off and you shouldn't give up and da, 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 da. And she's like, it just seems so toxic. I said, exactly. I said, that's what a lot of us are working with with people right now because they come to me for a reading and then I have to go and try to help them move past those perspectives. And that's, I think a lot of us, if it wasn't the twin flame, there was something that along those lines, like it was a toxic perspective that we realized, okay, this is not getting me the results I want in my life. And obviously this perspective is flawed. So now I'm having to readjust it, right? On the 5D level, some more over here. We're starting out with the 10 of cups, right? which is what everybody wants. And I feel like everybody felt like you might have had it in the past and you're trying to get back to it because right after that is a decision that needs to be made. 
There's something that needs to be made because it's Page of Wands, Knight of Wands. What I feel there, there's a push to really take off in a direction, but you need to make a solid decision. Like you need to really decide what is your Ten of Cups. And this is on the 5D perspective. This is what the 5D is telling everybody right now. What? What do you want? I feel like um getting that scene from the notebook where Noah's screaming at her, going, What do you want? And she thinks that new thing, but what do you want? What's up, blah, blah, blah. What do you want? Right? What do you want out of life? And you have to make a solid decision on that. And I think a lot of you guys, I mean, especially me, because some areas I take as I hate the solid routine. I like adventure. I like things to be shaking up all the time. The Ten of Cups is scary because it's also kind of boring, right? What's the ultimate happiness? The ultimate happiness is what? Peace and a boring life, right? But I don't want drama anymore. But at the same time, I don't want to be locked into just sitting there, right? But I got my Ten Cups. Now you just got to sit here with them. And I think people are really scared of making those decisions. Well, what? Or making the decision that it's not going to last, right? And just with these two reversed, it's like the, and I think that's the masculine. It's a bit of the ego there because it's both the page and the knights. And they're both the immature er energies of passion here. And reverse they've got no direction they're not bringing any messages they're not anything else like that and they're not going to so if you've been feeling like you've been having a hard time finding what you're passionate what you're passionate about it's because you're not making a decision on what you want what genuinely would bring you what do you think your 10th cup is you know you have to know what you want in order to ask for it and receive it you can't put open intentions out and I tell you guys all the time, I do that all the time, what I don't ask for nothing from the universe, stuff like that. So I have a hard time making these decisions too. I mean, got the temperance reversed, right? For me, the temperance card is all about compassion and composure, right? It's also the sad card, but it's reversed. So... Whatever decision you make, see, that's the thing too. What, what do you want? You don't want to be greedy, right? Nobody wants to be greedy. Um, you need to. You don't want to hurt anybody. So, just put those factors into your decisions, right? If you're not having compassion, especially for yourself and for those who are important to you, that will be going on with you into your life. The decisions you make. They have to be as compassionate as possible. It doesn't mean, like, if it's the end of a relationship or something like that. Even that is showing compassion. Even that is showing compassion. If you have to end something, it shows compassion. If you have to end a friendship or take a break from a toxic connection in order to maintain this, that's an act of compassion for yourself. What I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this to help me. Because I can't help you in the energy that I'm in right now. I need to settle my own energies and then I'll be back into a place where I can help those around me. But whew. I don't know what that ringing is. And as soon as I said that, it stopped. Trying to find the words. I got something coming through for sure. You know, it's hard because it's because I haven't figured it out yet. That's what it is. It's like, what? Well, it's hard to give advice on something that you haven't even figured out yourself yet. But it's like trying to find it's trying to find the balance. Yeah, it's like she's mixing the cups back and forth. And it's like, well, you're trying to find the balance in the cups, but there's, there's too much on this side. Well, there's too much on this side. But compassion for myself. I don't know. I don't have no compassion for anybody else. I put some compassion for some other people. What? I ain't got no compassion for myself now. So you got to find that balance, right? 
where you're being fair to yourself um, without being a narcissist, right? And I get that too, because I'm a triple fire sign and I do have some narcissistic tendencies. I've owned up to that a lot in my life. So, yeah, I think that's a big message that came through for y'all. Let's get a magic card. We haven't done that in a while. Any questions from the peanut gallery? A couple of y'all watching. Like achievement. Win the award, accolade, or contract. Definitely if you're going for something right now. Yeah, find the balance in that. Don't put too heavy of an expectation on it. And uh, don't put any ultimatums on it. My dragonflies. You bring light to the world. Just remember that. Whatever achievements you're going for, the biggest sabotaging things that you can do to yourself is think that you don't deserve it or someone else does and things of that nature. So definitely more compassion there. That's the big message today. Big word today, compassion. You are a dragonfly. You light up the world. And unfortunately, also, I said this to somebody the other day, too. They pulled the dragonfly card, and I was like, you know what? Not everybody, because there's a lot of butterfly talk right now. It's like, butterfly people, uh, caterpillars can't understand butterfly people. Well, you know what? Butterflies can't understand dragonflies. And unfortunately, dragonflies are here to eat butterflies, along with other pests. And things of that nature, you know, it's we all didn't come to be elegant, flowy butterflies that drift through this world. And there's people, oh, butterfly. No, some of us came to be dragonflies and zip around and jet pilots and not, you know, we all have our own unique paths. We all have our own unique transformation process. I mean, if you want a meditation today to focus on, I would um, I would look up the life cycle of a dragonfly. And then just think about that. I mean, that's usually what my meditations are. I need a topic when I do a meditation. Like, yeah, like one of my favorites is um, the woolly moth, the woolly bear moth in the Arctic. And it takes that moth like 17 years and stuff sometimes to evolve into a moth for one season. It spends 17 years as a caterpillar. It wakes up every when every spring and eats as much as it can in the, like, six weeks of vegetation that it has to eat. And then it freezes for the winter. And then it comes back to life just for those six weeks. And it just gets it just every year. And sometimes if it's, like, if the spring is a little bit longer, um, it can do it in less time. But, yeah. It still takes a lot of time for it. And I always like, that's one of my favorite meditations to think about being frozen for most of the year and only being awake for a month or two of the year. It's pretty crazy. I like to think about the life cycles of the butterflies and the life cycles of the dragonflies, how they move from one creature and shed their skin and their shells. Because people always talk about, you know, a snake will shed its skin, but it'll always be a snake. But caterpillars and dragonflies and things like that that shed those exoskeletons and come out a completely different creature and that is what spiritual spiritual people are that's what star seeds are and things of that nature when we awaken um it's not like a snake shedding we're not just or a spider molting into just coming out of its shell and being still being what it was just a bigger version of it it um we actually transform we are, we, when we come through the other side, we are completely different people and it is heavy on those around us. That's why it's hard. That's why it's a burden because you will always have people from your past that'd be like, you're being fake. You used to be this way. And it's like, no, 
that is the definition of transformation, y'all. All right. That was a heavy morning. I love y'all. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to go fishing today. I might do something else on the other channel. Might start doing the card of the day over there. Maybe through the week. Just one card a day. We shall see. We shall see. I'll mull on it tonight. And I love you. Blessed be all those who walk these weird and winding paths with me. Thank you for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe. Click my like button, y'all. If you guys are going to just stare at me all this time, you might as well do something with it, right? I love you, and I'll see you later, probably tomorrow.